That would be great. So yeah, what you just saw was some behind the scenes footage of us filming some bits and bobs for airlift. So yeah, there's obviously a free episode sort of thing going on in the background of this um, from airlift. So that'll be all produced properly, not some low quality stuff like me. Um, but yeah, that'll eventually be available to watch on YouTube, um, free part of series of the whole process of this build. Um, that's not to say you won't see anything from me on this car now. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna film me doing this and just save the video. And what I'm gonna do is I'm basically gonna wait until they posted their video. So the people watching the video of this from Airlift should watch my video at the same time. And then whoever watches Airlift video it will take you straight to my video because it should technically be in the suggested things because other people are watching the same videos. Yeah, so the videos on this will be held back a bit. That wasn't the plan to start with, but I've just decided that's probably just firm up at the same time because people will be interested in the car they are gonna watch my video, blah, blah, blah. Um, so there'll be a couple of episodes and I'll sort of do them in stages. Um, maybe upload them all at the same time, I don't know. But uh, yeah, we're just filming a bit of behind the scenes today and now I can finally get cracking. Got my drop block on, like all this link bar, measured it up, and we can see whereabouts we need to go. Um, I'm happy that this fits, that's decent. Um, obviously, these springs coming off. My plan now is to just do this over the next week or so. What else have I been doing this week? This truck, fixing the air loops and stuff in that. I've just put a gauge in it, I'll show you that now. This car was already a manual setup air ride, but I've just wired a gauge in for now. Um, I'm just basically testing for air leaks now before I put it on there and we do have a very slight air leak already so not quite sure why but I'll figure that out I got my bench over from the other side there's lots more space here I've absolutely blitzed the place it is so clean um, not that probably anyone cares but as you can see there's a lot of stuff actually got homes for itself now so that's good i've moved all my fridge and stuff from here so now this space is really open so yeah also just got delivery look at this new banner for the workshop um i'm gonna probably start putting a load of stuff on the walls now now i got rid of uh one of those that was here um i'm gonna put a load of stuff on this wall because it's blank and i want to just basically fill the walls up because well that's what i like Following on from that, sticker, we've got the small G, and then we've got the full Gresswells there. Boom. I have absolutely loads of these. I know I've only got one sheet here, but I've got loads in the van. Um, loads of them available. We'll be sticking that on the website when it goes live, along with a potential of some banners. I'll get some made. They're actually quite expensive to get made in this size. Um, what do you think is a respectable price for a banner this one's massive it's like two meters long by well half a meter or something like that. two by five i don't know it looks cool um but if you is that something that is feasible then i'll do it because it's cool i like it anyway this video is not me just rambling on about all the stuff that i'm doing apart from it is because it's my youtube channel and this is what i'm doing this I've made the decision that tomorrow, today's Thursday, tomorrow will be Friday, I'll be stripping the interior out of this car because we're raising the floor up. I want it to be on the floor. I don't want anything in the way of the sill. That's going on the floor. That's happening. The full dedication move has begun. So I'm going to start that tomorrow. I'll be doing this tomorrow, not today, because I've got to sort the truck out. And 24 hours has passed. Let's get this interior out. What's good about this is we can take it all out, give it a good clean out of the car, and then when you go put it back in, it's gonna be nice and fresh. So, let's get all this trim off here, all the way out to the bottom of the dash, center console out, seats out, and then carpet. Ugh, door cars and everything can stay in there, but yeah, that's the main bit. Uh, I've taken the carpet trim protector off here, and it's actually blue carpet. You can't actually see in there, it's so dirty, but it's actually blue. It's not very really good on camera. But this needs a good clean. 
Maybe it's that colour. Who knows? As I mentioned in the previous video, all the brake lines and stuff are inside the car already. They're literally just here. So they're perfect condition as well. So when we got the carpet out, I'll make sure not to stand on them at any point. Pulling carpet out of the car has got to be one of the most tedious things in the entire world. I'm not joking. I think the gear knobs like stuck on. What an absolute idiot to twist off. Right, now I'm stopping an idiot, I can actually show you this. This panel houses the old hydraulic switches. Now, for us, we're getting rid of them. You know, they're not gonna, they're not gonna be part of our system anymore. We're getting a switch box, it's gonna be completely separate. But we do have this here, so I might try and find a center console piece. Um, it is black plastic and I know that the black interiors are quite rare well, according to some guy I spoke to anyway he might be lying anyway um, yeah we're gonna take all this out just ignore what's in there just cut it all out because we're getting new stuff oh god No more hydraulic wiring. Did I just break that? I don't know. I think I was okay. If not, we can just cry about it. Right, so I've undone pretty much everything we need to do with the carpet. It should pull straight back out now. I've chucked all the trim clips and everything on top of there. Not in any sort of order whatsoever, because I can't be bothered. There's one thing we need to do, and that is cut the carpet as it goes over the tunnel under the dashboard. It's one of those things that no one really talks about, but we all do it. And it's a bit frowned upon, but it is what it is. There we go, interior out. Oh, free cigarette. Mmm. Saves on that. Nice. Mm. <gasps> that might be stuck a little bit higher. See, as you can see, it is actually blue. Actually, you can't see that in the picture. It is blue, trust me. These are the air struts that we're putting in here. A little teaser. So yeah, now we can fully see the interior of the Prelude. Now, the floor that we're gonna cut out is at the back here, after this center section here. So you should probably be able to see that. It literally swoops down like this, all the way to the bulkhead panel here. And basically, where that droops down like that, 
it also droops down below the seal. You see it here? This is the floor and the seal's up here. So we need to raise it about an inch. And um, to do that, well, we've basically got to cut the entire floor out to do a proper job. Now, if we get underneath here, right, my little trick I like to use is a spirit level. Now, if I put that on the lowest point of the floor, then get it level, and it will basically imitate the floor. Uh, and then get it on the pinch well of the sill. That is, I'll move my hand here. It's hard to do on the floor. I wish I had two ramps. Oh wait, I do. Anyway. So yeah, that is just shy of an inch. So it's literally 20, two, 22 mil. Um, yeah, so we need to raise the floor 22 mil. Now I'm not gonna say it needs to be raised 22 mil. We're gonna say an inch, so 25 mil. Um, yeah, there's a few little problems that I've thought about. Um, and it might be just a balancing act of making things work so we've obviously got our seat mounts here and here so they're obviously bolted to the floor if we raise the floor 25 mil then the seat's obviously going to get raised 25 mil so i think what we're going to do is sort of just chop the seat mounts like in half weld the floor back in and then when it comes to putting the seat back in we'll shoehorn the seat brackets underneath it i think that's going to be the easiest way so yeah it's slightly raised up there so we can probably just trim that we'll see how tall it is already it's about 15 mil so let's say 15 mil off here and the seat actually bolts on up here and this is where the rail goes yeah there's always going to be a gap there for the original seat anyway so it's not like metal on metal contact so we can probably close that tolerance up quite a bit so we've, all we've got to do is get 25 mil from this surface to this surface to this surface here so i'm not too worried about that one same again with this one it's literally just raised up off the floor that one's not too bad the main concern that i have well, it's not really a concern. I just know it's going to be a little bit tricky to try and make it look original. So, obviously, these are all indents in the floor. So, I'll probably just weld it up to this point here. I won't go any further. I'll just start here where it starts to swoop down. And I basically need to make the panel like this, all like corrugated or whatever you want to do. So, I need to make a flat sheet with all of these in here like that. So then I can butt weld it up against there, I think. Or what I can do is completely change it and just do a big cross in the middle or whatever. But I've done that sort of stuff before. So if I'm going to do something else, I want to try and make it look original as possible without it actually being original, if that makes sense. So if I can get that bead to line up and then weld it in that way, then I think it'll look really, really good. So you need a tool for that, and I have just the thing. This right here is the cheapest bead roller that you can buy. So basically, um, it's supposed to have a massive handle, but I've got myself a pair of mole grips. Um, it's pretty rusty because I've not used it in like, I don't know, probably two years. Um, yeah, basically what you do is obviously that spins around and you feed metal through here. And you can see there, it's got a bulge there and then the opposite bulge there. So as you push it through, this then presses into here and they basically squeeze together. You tighten this up and you turn it like that and it creates that metal line through it. When I bought this, I wasn't sure if I was gonna do it loads or just do it one time and go, this is boring, but it does get the job done pretty nicely if you've got enough patience. You're supposed to strengthen the back of it up because they're a bit flexible. But I'll just show you how it works quickly on a bit of scrap and you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. Right, I've got you balanced on a little tiny bit of metal. So it might not work. So we're just gonna go straight through it for now to get an idea of what we're going on about. And then um, 
it should make sense, but it's sort of basically. See, I told you. My poor camera. Yeah, still balanced on the exact same bit of camera. But anyway, yeah, you basically get your metal in here, just sort of get it on top, like there. And then you want to just nip this one up. So it sort of puts a bit of pressure on there. Make sure this is done up at the back. And then from there, you just run it through there. This is 1.5. Oh, that's probably not tight enough. Hang on, let me tighten it up a bit. Right, you're balanced on my tripod now, but I still think it's no good. Um, this is 1.5 mil sheet. So it's a bit, you know, too thick in my opinion. Needs a bit of thinner sheet. So round again, one. This top, you can see it's literally starting to make a line in there. That is just way too thick of a bit of metal. I don't know why I even tried to start putting it through. You see that little dent in there? That's what it does. Let me just put it through a couple more times. But uh, you see there, it has made that mark eventually. We will be using a lot thinner gauge sheet because well, you see it on the back side, it looks a lot better. This is really cheap and horrible. It's flexing. The metal's too thick, so it's not working too well. But you can, when done correctly, you can make it do good things. So, one more pass. There you go. So it's done that bead all the way across. And then you just sort of like flatten it out a bit in the vise, straighten it out after you've bead rolled it. Now, we're not going to be using 1.5, as I said. You can get different step drills or, or dies, want to call it. And then see that it's twisted because there's too much pressure on it. So we had to run a bit of box section along here, down here, and just stiffen it up because this is just too flimsy. But I'll talk more about that in the next video as I do it. Um, I just need to figure out how I'm going to do this a bit more. I'm going to cut a bit of cardboard out that goes around here, around the seat mount blah 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 and then we're just basically going to try and follow the contour of i don't know if you can see it but this line here you can see it, it's like flat against there and where the floor where the floor drops down here obviously that continues straight on so we're going to follow this line here all the way along and we're going to make a floor for here but that'll be in the next video I do of this, which I'm going to start doing over this weekend. It's Friday now. I know I'm going to chuck this video out tonight. Lots of few, there's a few bits going on in this video. Um, just a lot of explaining and doing and other cars and stuff. I was hoping to get more content on that this week, but yeah, we didn't manage to get it done, but it happens. Anyway, before I go, I just wanted to say we're going to put a chassis rail on the inside, up here and then up the bulkhead. Just here, loads of dimple dies in it. It's going to look really cool and I'm excited for it. But I'm going to edit this video now, stick it up so you know what's going on. And then during the weekend, I'm going to start working on this in between Formula One. So yeah, thank you for watching. Um, get excited because things are actually happening. Goodbye.